Okay, well, it's looking pretty good. Um, everything's welded on, it's still pretty hot in places. Um, I've done a test fit on the vehicle and everything seems to line up pretty well. Okay, so this is the 75 by 40 box that I've used for the, for the wraps. The bumpers uh, sat, you know, if, you were, if we look down it, that's how it's going to be on the car. So we're looking basically from the underneath of the bumper at the moment. Uh, we've got that 75 by 100 angle iron, that's the main spine of the bumper, so to speak. Uh, and then we've got this 40 by 40 box. That's about a 3 mil wall, I think it is. Um, yeah, that's yes, about 3 mil, I would say. And that makes up these sort of bumperette bits. Uh, and the, the, the style is bang on for me. I wanted it really open down the middle. Um, but to have this this sort of, you know, this this taper here, this this angle. So if, if you hit something, it's more likely it's going to glance away rather than all the force uh, being directed straight into the vehicle. And that would then cause the bumper may, maybe to bend if it's sufficiently strong, the force. Um, the welds have come out pretty well. Quite happy with that. We're on full power. Um, we do struggle to get the amps in this workshop. We're, we're a long way from the fuse box. Uh, poor old MIG doesn't actually achieve as much power as it's rated to achieve. But, um, yeah. Bit of cleaning up work, get it painted. Very happy with that. Heck of a lot of work. A lot more than I uh, originally planned, but... Hey, you know, you do what you do. So there you go. One bumper at. So I drop it down. Oh, that is heavy. Okay. Then this is how it'll look from the top. Um, I'll go and grab the step. We'll put the step in. Okay, so this is the original Nissan step. Hopefully it's gonna it's gonna fit in. There we go. That's that's where it should sit. Oh, excellent. Alright, so that's that's sort of looking from the back of the vehicle now. The tow bar sits underneath all of this so we can ignore where the tow ball is. But that's pretty much how it's gonna look. And um yeah. You know, we've got a bit of bit of protrusion here, which is what I wanted uh, beyond the aluminium step because these steps get bent really easily. They're quite they're quite weak, to be honest. They're not designed for strength; they're just designed to look good. So yeah, I think if you were driving up behind that and you you felt like you were going to give the vehicle a bit of a nudge, you might think twice about it in your Prius. Cool. And all made from scrap, really. No steel was bought to make this. Okay, so there you go. It's um, all finished and now it's time for me to give it a really good clean up and get rid of all that welding splatter and sharp edges and burrs and bits and pieces. And then I can paint the majority of the bumper prior to welding it onto those brackets that are already on the chassis. Right, let's get to it. Time is of the essence. That's very fun to get off well. Okay, that took some cleaning up. There's a lot of surface of steel on here actually. A lot of dust too. Well, it came up pretty well I reckon. I mean there were some bits that I can't get in at and sure you could use emery cloth but 
in all honesty, this isn't a show truck. This is done to protect the vehicle. And the paint is there to make sure it doesn't rust too much. A little bit of rust is okay. Um, okay, so the next step is for me to paint this. Now, I've been looking around the workshop and I really haven't got a lot of paint. So what I'm going to do is paint the rear side first, apart from the bits that weld to the, to the, the plates on the chassis. And then if I run out of paint, I can still get it put on the vehicle and I can just finish off painting it on the truck. Um, probably tomorrow after I've got some more paint. Hopefully it won't rust too much. Um, I do have some aerosol paint as well, some uh, well through primer. So if you start to see a, a shed load of copper coloured paint on here, then it's pretty obvious I've run out of the black stuff for now. Okay, let's get painting. Right, I've found some well through primer. I never use this anymore and it's an old can, so I'm going to spray the whole thing in this first as a primer before I start to put on the black stuff. There it goes. Ah, right, that's better. Okay, it's all painted in primer. Now that's a weld through primer, so I was actually able to prime over the bits that I'm gonna be welding to the truck as well, even better. Um, so I'll let that dry, give it half an hour or so, that's all it takes for that kind of stuff. Uh, and then we're gonna paint the rear, the hidden part of the bumper first, uh, with the black gooey sort of chassis paint stuff that I've got left. Um, I don't think I'm going to have enough to do the whole thing, but we'll give it a go. Um, I would rather spray, and I have got some black gloss as well, I'd rather spray the visible side of it. Um, so we'll do that after I've painted the back with the chassis paint, that's the brush paint stuff. Uh, and then I'll try and dig out the, the gloss black that I've got that can do the, 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 the visible, the, the seen part of the bumper. Because when you brush paint it, you get all the lines and it looks a bit hillbilly kind of stuff um, so yeah next I'll give this half an hour a cup of coffee come back I'll be able to breathe again by then because oh, massive headache and um, we'll crack on cheers
Okay, so this bit is hidden by the steps, so there's no need for me to use the uh, the aerosol spray for that, which we haven't got a lot of. Plus, I don't want this thing to rust, and under the steps, it's going to sort of trap moisture and things, I suppose. So, so pay the bench while we're on. Okay, um, so I've got plenty of this left, so I may as well just paint this bit. While we're on. It's the first time I've done like a split paint thing. Cool. And having that gold coppery coloured uh, primer really helps you to see if you've missed any bits as well. So a, again, never used it for this kind of stuff, but. Uh, just happened to be spare, so use it up, and it's making this job really easy. And it gives us an extra layer as well, which is great. There we go. This paint takes probably a couple of hours to go to go hard, so I won't bother spraying it until this is dry, dry, just in case we get a reaction between the paints because they're all different brands. And, Sod floor, things can go wrong. But, uh, no, I'm really looking forward to getting this welded back on the truck. Excellent. Okay, well that's it for the chassis paint stuff. Um, the rest of it's going to get sprayed because that's a lot more visual and it'll give a better, a much better finish than the brush on paint. But it won't be as thick, so I might need to do two or three coats. Okay, well we'll let this dry and then uh, we'll get it sprayed. So it's time for some gloss black on the rest of it. There it goes. Fingers crossed we don't run out. We've got a second can.
done. Heaps of paint left because we've still got the uh, the ends under here to do. Okay, so while this is drying, and I'm bound to give it another coat, but you don't need to see that. Um, I'm going to make some aluminium. Get, grab some aluminium checker plate. I've got this about five mil thick aluminium checker, and I'm going to cut out a couple of pieces that I can put on later on once it's on the vehicle that will just cover this area here, and it'll basically act a bit like a step. Uh, because we've got a roof rack on the vehicle with roof tents and stuff that we use on a regular basis and down the one of the, down the left hand back door is a ladder but it's still a bit of a step up to get onto that ladder so if I put a couple of checker plate steps it'll just fill in this void and it'll also give us an extra step to get up onto the roof um, so yeah that's the next job so I'll move this out of the way hopefully I won't get too much paint on my hands uh, and I'll go and dig out the checker plate and we can have a measure up and cut some checker plate out. Here we go. Okay, so that wants to be... one sixty. And in length, it wants to be... Three nine five. Okay, well that's the only two measurements we need because we know that that's ninety degrees. That's the plan. So we need two of those. Easy. Right. One sixty. In theory, done a bit of grinding to miss some welds and stuff. That's what we need. Two triangles. Okay. So we find another grinding disc. Cutting disc. Slip disc, actually. Maybe. Somewhere.
turn my wire speed up a little bit. Chinese thing. <laughs> Damn you. That's not bloody good, is it? Jeez. Look at that on the English one. Pull it out now. Try again. back to that in a minute.
finished. Well, hey, two days, probably about 16 hours work. It's finished and it's on the truck. And now I can drive the truck again. Because I need to, because I'm at work tomorrow. Um, yes, as with all projects, it's taken about twice as long as I originally planned. Uh, I planned a day, it's now two days. Although I have done one or two other little things in between, so it's not too bad. Um, it's turned out exactly as planned, really. It fills the brief, it's strong, it's black, it hugs the bodywork, it's got the original step. Very happy with it. And I'm sure I'll be making plenty more fabrication videos in the future as well. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and watching me make a rear bumper for my Nissan Patrol. Uh, and maybe you've picked up a few helpful hints along the way. If you have any questions or comments, then please leave them down at the bottom. Um, and if you want to subscribe to the channel, then please do, and you'll get notifications as and when any new videos get uploaded. And there's probably four or five videos every single week going up on the channel and it's, it's really growing well I'm very pleased with it so thank you for uh, for those of you that are supporting it okay it's time for me to sign off have a shower and well order another new shirt because this one is dead it's had a hard time okay cheers for now over and out <laughs>